start this morning off right. The theme of the prayer breakfast is Genesis, a new beginning. So any chaplain worth his salt, I went to the scripture to understand what Genesis was. You know, the scripture says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and it was without form and void. And then he made a man. The man became lonely, and he created something for him that could keep his attention for hours. He created something so great and so saintly and so righteous for him that only a man could appreciate that. So God gave him a football team. <laughs> And he named them Saints. He not only gave him this team, he said they would have dominion over the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, and every creeping thing. So he told the Saints, I want you to pray for the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, and every creeping thing. So the first people we want to pray for is the fish of the sea. We like to pray for the dolphins. <laughs> we like to pray for the fowl of the air. We like to pray for the eagles, Dolphin the falcons, <laughs> and your seahawks. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, we would like to pray for every creeping thing, the bears, the panthers, and the lions. <laughs> but you know what's so good about God? What's so wonderful about God, he asks us to even pray for our enemies, so we like to pray for Jerry Jones and the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a chaplain, it is very important that we keep confidentiality. And I am a person who likes to be confidential, but I have to tell you a story of this young soldier who came to me the other day. And I hope I don't get fired for this, but I have to tell you this. He, he said, Chaplain, when I die, I want Cam Newton to be my pallbearer. I said, why is that, soldier? He said, so he can let me down one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Cam, but we are playing y'all this week. So I know your time is valuable. So I'm going to tell you like Kim Kardashian told her second, third, and fourth husband, don't get comfortable, I won't be here long. <laughs> I practiced that joke, don't <laughs> My subject today is, your leadership is a sermon, be careful how you preach it. I'm going to say that again because I don't want you to miss that. Your leadership is a sermon, be careful how you preach it. I'm asked, now, these days, what leadership model do I follow? Now, I'm a simple man. I spent many years as a field artillery soldier, 13 Bravo. So my leadership philosophy is simple. I follow a lady called Dorothy. She is from the Wizard of Oz. You see, Dorothy never led anybody in her life, including herself. But she was thrown into a leadership position. And on her journey, she saw a scarecrow who was on a pole. She saw people mocking him, sneering at him, and told him he could never get down off of that pole because he wasn't quite good enough. He wasn't quite smart enough. They told him he didn't have the brains to be anything but a scarecrow. But this leader saw other things in him. So she encouraged him to get down from that pole so she can help get him a brain. On her second stop, she saw a tin man who was in the midst of a junk pile called life. He was rusted from head to toe. He couldn't move because somebody had convinced him that he lacked the capacity to have a heart, that he didn't have the fortitude 
to remove himself from this environment of junk that he had created for himself. He, like many of you in this room, are stuck in life because you're doing the same thing day after day, year after year, buying into the false narrative of I can't do better. The false narrative of someone listening to someone else's dreams and not fulfilling your own. But this leader took him from that junk pile and convinced him to go on the journey with her to find him a heart. The third person she encountered was a lion. This lion was afraid of his own shadow. He was broken. He was rejected. He wasn't even in touch with himself to even roar like a lion is supposed to roar. He didn't have the confidence to believe that he was the king that he was supposed to be because he had been hanging around those people who didn't encourage his tenacity. They didn't encourage his boldness. They didn't encourage his confidence. So it led him to have no values, no courage, and no conviction. You see, you can never become an eagle hanging around chickens. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> you can never become an eagle hanging around chickens. There's an old saying, you are the sum total of the five people you hang around. If you're the smartest person among your friends, you need to get some more friends. <laughs> hold up, hold up. This is not the AR from Chaplin. I don't want you to go back and say, Chaplin told me to ditch all of my friends. I did not say that. <laughs> what I'm saying to you is, if you don't have somebody in your life that can help you grow and help you be better, you need to find them. You see, this leader that I'm talking about, she was not only courageous for herself, she was courageous for those people around her. Your leadership is a sermon. Be careful how you preach it. You see, that's what leaders do. Leaders dream for those who have not found the capacity to dream for themselves. Leaders give people hearts by way of encouragement because they are empathetic because they are under their leadership. You see, leaders give people courage who are afraid by being purposeful and intentional leaders. You see, leadership is not about income. Leadership is about outcome. Why do I tell you this story? I tell you this story because many of your soldiers out there are stuck on that pole. They don't think they have a brain to be successful. Many of your soldiers out there are stuck in that junk pile called life, and they're looking for you to heal their wounds. Many of your soldiers out there don't have the courage to pursue their greatness because they have not been shown the realm of possibility. Why do I tell you this story? Because I was that scarecrow. I was that lion, I was that tin man who didn't think he had any brains. And I was stuck in life because I didn't have the courage to pursue my dreams. I thought I was too dumb. I thought I was inadequate. I thought I was not quite good enough. So I said to myself, a little boy from Louisiana, maybe I can join the army to get some discipline. I can blow up stuff. That seems pretty easy, right? But what I found from 1992 before 1993 was out, I had received two Article 15. It's for disrespect or something. I don't even know what that means. It probably was their fault. <laughs> But I wanted to change my life. I didn't know how.
You see, up to that point, I had not accomplished anything in my life. So when I was to receive my punishment from the commander, I learned a great deal about leadership that day. I learned about character. I learned about competence. My commander said to me, I want you to hear this. He said to me, we're, we're glad we're getting, we're getting rid of the likes of you. He said, this man's army would be a better place without you. He went on to say, that's why I'm getting out of the army, because I don't have to deal with trash like you anymore. You can't even be disciplined enough to fulfill elementary tasks. I remember standing before him, brokenhearted, defeated, thinking to myself, he's right. I remember thinking to myself, this leader, whom I loved, he didn't know it. I used to practice being like him in the mirror. I used to practice walking like him on my off time. I even started to dip because he dipped. I want you to listen, leaders. What a responsibility you have as leaders. When I left that room, I thought to myself of doing the unfathomable. This leader, while he was tough talking me, he didn't realize the man before him had been molested at 10 years old by a family friend. He didn't realize in special, I was in special ed in the eighth grade. He didn't realize that I had failed the ninth grade and I had struggled with self-esteem all of my life. As I left his office, I saw my family on the sidewalk, they were waiting to see what would happen of their errant father and husband. And I waved to them, metaphorically, symbolically saying, you would be better without the likes of me in your life. You see, leaders, human beings, people, your words are life and death. The way you speak to human beings is important. We have a term, a phrase in the military, sometimes you have to meet people where they are. But to meet people where they are, you gotta know where they're at. I was outside, I was doing extra duty, I was pulling up weeds and painting rocks. I don't know if you can do that now, that's like a eel. <laughs> And I heard a voice. I thought it was from the heavens. I said, God, is that you? And he said, Private, don't you hear me? I said, oh. <laughs> I said that's Sergeant Major. <laughs> he came over 